Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome back. Today is day five of the our online global self-awakening retreat. And it appears to me that the energy is building up and things are getting more interesting. As we come together as one unified field, we get more connected because we're diving into this space that has been created, this field, uh, the unified field of oneness. That's how I explain what, what is fifth dimension. And my explanation is a unified field of love, a unified field of oneness, that there is no second one in it. So it's only one. So there is not another. It's just the one. So we're diving into, we're disappearing into the oneness. So you can't be this person who's carrying this garbage bag of personal history and become one. Because in this emergence into the oneness, the person has to disappear. So you can't bring your stuff into fifth dimension with you. It's just impossible to enter into the fifth dimensional consciousness. You have to let go of your personal story. And I know that there, a lot of people are very attached to that story. Even though they go through a life, a lifetime of trying to free themselves from their emotional baggages, the traumas, the damages that have been inflicted to them through life. But in the same time, there is this deep investment into the story. And the proof is in the pudding because do you, do you hear me? Am I being hurt? I want to make sure the mics are working. There's no background music. So and also, I wasn't aware that we had um, blocked the chat box, so we have opened it up. So if you have a question, you can write it to me. And, uh, or if you need to communicate, let me know, and then I unmute you or unmute yourself, and then uh, we can talk when the time comes. So anyway... It's just not possible. It's impossible to carry the garbage bag that we talked about yesterday. I believe it was yesterday that I was talking about it or a couple of days ago of our personal story and wanting to become one with God, wanting, having the desire of the union, having the desire to enter into a fifth dimensional realm of consciousness, to elevate to this higher level of consciousness, then you ha there's a price to pay. You have to give something up. And that's how it is uh, with anything. Anything of value has a price. That's the way it is. You have to pay the price one way or the other. 
and for fifth dimensional consciousness, arriving to this higher level of consciousness, even if we don't call it fifth dimensional consciousness, higher level of consciousness, this place that spiritual seekers from all over the world are seeking for it, which is freedom from suffering, which is inner peace, which is entering into this place that you're in a state of bliss and you're no longer are being dragged down by emotions or thoughts, by fear, worry, anxiety. and freeing yourself from all of it. But you have to pay a price. It does not come free. It's not a free thing. One way or the other, it has a price you have to pay. The number one part of it is that the time and dedication. You have to get centered, you have to get focused, you have to get dedicated, and freedom has to become your priority. It's got to be your number one priority in life. If it's not your number one priority in life, then that means it's not that important. Something else is more important to you. Everything I say is just simply very easy to figure out. Very easy to understand. Super easy. It can't be any more easier than this. That if I prioritize something else, let's say I'm going to prioritize my business or taking care of my wealth or taking care of my kids or taking care of my animals or taking care of my land or whatever or my beauty my looks my body whatever is my number one priority so that's where most of my energy is going through Check it out. Check yourself out. See when something is your priority, where your attention is. Your attention goes in that direction. So if self-realization, also self-realization, enlightenment, awakening, these are big words and been used a lot. So you need to kind of sit with yourself and be honest with yourself and figure out what do I mean by self-realization? What do I mean? What does freedom mean to me? Okay? Because some people think freedom, self-realization means is a utopian style of life. That we somehow raise our vibrations, we enter into fifth dimensional consciousness, and then we are in this rosy life that everything is great, everything is in harmony, everything works at, in accordance to what we think, in accordance to what you think, basically, what a utopian life should look like that there is no death, there is no violence, there is no disagreements, there is no competition, there is no ambition, and people are egoless, or whatever you imagine. You need to sit down with yourself and do that. I can't do it for you. You have to do it for yourself. So, A, to come with this thing that your imagination or your idea of a utopian life what that is, B, 
is what is awakening to you. What does that mean? What's enlightenment to you? Do you... And for everybody is different. If somebody is dealing with deep tra tra trauma issues from childhood, so then their idea of enlightenment, awakening is that that area is solved and they no longer deal with the trauma. That's how they relate it to. If somebody else is has a di deep affiliation and affection to animal rights and saving animals and not having them slaughtered or being tortured or the way they've been treated on this planet. So then their perspective on enlightenment and awakening is going through creating a, a life according to their vision that mankind is kind to the animals. If you're, again, so everybody's got their own thing. I don't know what you have, but I know what I had. Mine was, I wanted to free myself from fear, from worry, from anxiety, from jealousy, from my emotional ups and downs. But I didn't know that how deeply I'm identified with my thoughts, how deeply I was identified with my emotions and my body. I didn't know that. And like most spiritual seekers, when I sat with my guru, when I was with Papaji, I was with the master, you, I got high. You enter into the unified field, you start getting connected to the master's energy, the field that the master has created around himself, or it does get created automatically because the master is here and it's established into self-love and presence. And that automatically creates and activates the grid and creates this field around the presence, around this being, that begins to affect anything it's in surrounding. So when you're open to it and you're available to your spiritual teacher and you enter into that field that they've created or it's been created, whichever way we put it, you automatically become calm quiet because and then you start your mind goes into silence and then you start feeling blissed out you begin to get a taste of yourself and you get the bliss however since you're projecting it it's coming from your teacher you think you need to be around your teacher and that's where you get your bliss, which is very normal in the beginning. However, a true teacher, after God you established in this place, first you need to get established in this place and understand it, but then gradually, slowly, your teacher will guide you back inside towards yourself and the method of taking you back towards yourself to come to inner bliss is through centering yourself to become centered.
The purpose of getting centered is to take your attention from your attachments, your emotional and mental attachments to whatever story that you're involved with inwards towards one-pointedness. It's a shift of your attention on the outer world to bring your attention to the inner world. You're shifting your attention. But it's not possible to trust and love your method and your teacher without your teacher, your community, the method has to give you some signs. The proof is in the pudding. So once you start to touch yourself and feel the love and the bliss and your mind starts to quiet down, a relationship starts to happen with that system, whatever that system is, whether it's church, it's religion, whether it's spiritual teacher, it's your therapist, it's your mom, it's the school, it's your whatever that is. Where there is a system that you tap into, whether their intentions are holy whether whatever is their story I don't get into that that's a different story but right now I'm just trying to think keep things simple and the point is for me I want you to understand something I'm trying to use different ways of po possible different ways of communicating and relating to you a very simple thing so how do I get to you so you understand what I'm saying. So I use different methods, different ways, different language on different days to see if I can convey this message to you. If I can go around your intellectual understanding and touch your heart. If I can communicate with you from no mind because the mind stands in between us. The intellectual mind wants to discuss things. It wants to get into a debate. And I'm not interested in that because I have no interest in a conversation with your mind. I'm only interested in one thing and that's freedom. So back to what I was talking about is that entering into this place, entering into this field, this higher level of consciousness, you have to pay a price. It's not free. And the main price is your dedication, is you have to get focused and get dedicated and make it your priority. Buddha Siddhartha left. He was a prince and he had a kingdom to rule and he left everything. He left his kingdom, he left his wife, he left his kids, he gave everything away and he went on a seven-year pilgrimage. He turned his back to the world, to the riches of the world. He went after freedom. He had everything. I am sure at that time, besides his wife, he could have had any woman he wanted. 
He could have had many mistresses. He had land, castles, palaces, gold, silver, jewelry, wine, everything. Yet, he turned his back to all of it. He even turned his back to his children. And that's something is very dear to all of us. But he turned his back to his attachments, to the worldly attachments. And he went towards the light, the source, the calling, that which was calling him. And he wanted to become free. But what is this freedom? How do you, what is this freedom that one gives away everything in order to arrive to it? And the price. You have to understand anything of value in this life has a price. And if something of value given to you for nothing, and it doesn't matter how precious it is, you don't value it. And God must know this very well, better than anybody else. That's why you have to work on yourself and be dedicated to reach God. That's why she just doesn't show herself to everybody. Because they're just not worthy to, to see God. As simple as that. You have to become worthy for the presence, for Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, to show Her beautiful face to you. So, in a way, we call it purifying. In many religions or spiritual groups, they're talking about purification, to become pure. In order for Her Majesty to give you a smile, to give you a kiss, to touch you, to invite you to dance with her. So there's a price to pay. And you have to make that decision with yourself. Back in the day when I was a die-hard spiritual seeker, the price was because of the lack of communication that we have today because of not having internet and not having instant access to teachers, different teachings from all over the world, the way we have now, you had to go through a pilgrimage. And even though it was in a modern time, I left my life, I left my career, work, family, making money, whatever, friends, and went to India. Not knowing where I'm going to land, how things are going to work out, whether I'm going to get to the teacher or whatever. I didn't even know where Papaji lived. I just heard that he's in Lucknow and my friend said, go to Carl Carlton Hotel in Lucknow and you will find him. So based on this piece of information, I left to India. No address, nothing else, no last name. Just name Papaji, Carlton Hotel, and Lucknow. And I left everything and I went to India. But I didn't go to India first. I had to go to Iran because I had no money. I had gone bankrupt. So I arrived in Tehran, Iran with $50 in my pocket. And my sister had bought me a one-way ticket hoping that I may stay in Iran and like other good Iranian boys 
who came back from the West, I would get married and settle there and, and be another robot like the rest. But I was bound to get to the master and I wanted freedom. But anyway, somehow this is a long story of how many miracles happened and how I ended up getting to the master. But finally you get to the, at the feet of the master. You arrive there. Well, it's not like Okay, I'm here, and everyone's waiting for you, and they threw a red carpet for you, and waiting. So what? You're here. So as hundreds of other spiritual seekers that they found their way here, wait in line. Well, I want to see the master. Well, the master's not well. He's not seeing anybody till next week. So now you're in this village. And you have to find yourself a place to stay and all these things. And you have to wait. And then there is satsang. You have to be there early in the morning. It's winter time. It was very cold. You're freezing. You don't have proper clothing. So you have to buy stuff and go wait in line. And everyone's waiting. And then finally you get in. So it was so different than today. Today, we have become very spoiled. If your spiritual teacher is late or is not available or whatever, everyone starts complaining. Where is he? Where are you? How come you're not here? How come you don't pay attention to me? How come you don't look at me? Back in the day was a different story. You didn't have access to these teachers so easily. So you had to work hard to get to them. It was a price you had to pay. And if you're on a journey towards awakening and you want to be around the master in India, that means you have to leave your life in the West and go to India. And there was no internet, so you can't make a living. So you have to go on your own account, financing time, youth, energy, and go wait till the master looks at you or talks to you or give you darshan. Today we can easily access spiritual teachers online or they constantly traveling around the world so you can go see them. So that was a part of the price we had to pay for it. But that's not the only thing. There is more than that. It's the dedication to freedom. It's your focus. And a lot of that is lost. And many spiritual seekers become very spoiled and lost their focus. And they jump from here to there and there to this place. That's why in so many ways it's kind of spoiled. It's become fashionable, it's trendy to dress kind of spiritual, to have a mala around you, to dress, to put your yoga stuff on, have a little incense, have a crystal, have some feather, spiritual jewelry, spiritual earrings, everything to have the appearance of spirituality say the right words do the same right acts going to kirtans bhajans spiritual festivals but the dedication is different the dedication to freedom that's a different story and if you remember i talked about it i think it was on day second or third, that at the base of Himalaya, there's thousands of people. But when you want to climb all the way to the peaks of Mount Everest, and as you're climbing up this spiritual ladder, very little people are able to get to the very top. 
at the very top, when you get to the peaks and you look around, there's nobody around you. You're all alone by yourself. Because of the effort, dedication, the hardship, this path requires to come to the truth of who we are. You have to be very focused and dedicated. Find the right teacher with the right teachings and sticking to it, not jumping from one thing to another. You do it in early stages, but then as you get older and you get closer, the sense of urgency gets stronger. And that needs to be there. That sense of urgency is important because the sense of urgency becomes a very powerful desire. And that desire becomes like the horses that carrying the chariot. So that sense gets stronger. Sense of urgency. The time is passing by and you're missing out. And you're getting older and you're still stuck in your memory, your thoughts, which are your emotional baggages and traumas. They're all in the mind. And what the mind does is accumulates and brings out all these hidden fears that are not really looked at and uses a modern excuse to amplify this fear and project it into future. So you're haunted by your fears and anxiety and it brings depression. You get depressed. And by not being trained correctly, not having the right teachings, what we do is we're looking for comfort in the utter world. We're looking for peace, love, equilibrium in the world, which is never able to give us that. So consequently, your image and your idea of fifth dimensional consciousness becomes an ideology of your image of security and balance. Is your idea that you're projecting what fifth dimension and fifth dimensional consciousness should be, which you're projecting an ideal situation based on your personal experience. Are you with me? Are you here? You hear me? If you have a question, just keep your question, write it on a piece of note, and you can ask me later. We'll get into it. But right now, I'm just going to explain more things to you. So what do we do, Zaratustra? What's there to do? What do we have to do? What's the solution? How do I become free? You have to make freedom your priority. That has to be your priority, period. Nothing else could be your priority. Nothing else could be as important to you as freedom. Everything else, like what few days ago I said, I think it was last Wednesday at the Academy, awareness 
must be your priority. It means everything should be sacrificed for awareness. And awareness should never be compromised for anything else, ever. That kind of attitude and mentality. And in that type of attitude and mentality, fear will come. Because there are times you have to give, give away. You have to spend money on this. You have to give away certain lifestyle for it. You have to let go of certain people that you're attached to. And ultimately, you have to let go of your body. At the very end, your friend that you've been with for 70, 80 years, it will betray you. It will give you the finger. Your body will give you the finger. But you have to, before your body tells you, fuck you, because it will do that. If you haven't seen it around you happening to people and it hasn't happened to you, I guarantee it will happen to you 100%. I promise you. There's no way your body lives forever. Your body's going to fail you. So your best friend that you've been in it is going to give you the finger. If it hasn't done it yet, it will do it if it hasn't failed you. But you have people around you that it happened to them. They got cancer. They lost body parts. They had to go to surgeries. They had to go to a bunch of operations, chemotherapy, a lot of suffering because the body gave, it, gave up. Or they died young. But you have to be dedicated. That's the number one thing. And make that your priority. And start to wake up to the truth of who you are. And realize that you don't find any kind of security in the world you're in. Zero. It's only the illusion of security, my friend, that you're getting. It's only an illusion. That's all it is. So the price you have to pay is learning how to detach yourself. Get in the habit of it of letting go of things and knowing the things you have that you really look in the area of your life and see which area you really attached and know those are the areas that are going to come back and hunt you down those are the things that you're going to have to let go at one time buddha told one of his very devoted disciples that they've been with him since his awakening and he turns around and tells them in a sermon that he had with this 12 monks he tells them that I'm gonna send you out in the world you can't be with me anymore and if you see me on the road, you have to kill me. If you ever cross path with me and you come across me again, you have to kill your master. 
So first, he kicks them out, forces them to go. Secondly, he asks them that if they ever run into each other, they should kill him. Because that becomes your attachment too. So at one point, you have to let go of even the most beloved things to you. Your children. The people you love. Your pets. Your things. Things that you have collected in this life. You're going to have to let go of all of them one at a time if you want to become free. If you want to enter into the fifth dimensional consciousness, you have to let go of everything, including yourself, including your body. That needs to go too. That is the price that every enlightened being, every being that arrived to freedom paid. That's the price they all paid. That's what I'm saying. It's not free. You have to pay a price. And that price is your attachment. That attachment you have is the very key element that brings you back and keeps you here in this slavery. Because you're in a prison, you're in a high security prison that you don't even know. And you have a horrible master, horrible jailer on top of your head that has been torturing you from your childhood. And it's continuing to torture you. And that's your mind. Your mind is your master. And your attachments are in your mind. It's very easy. Check it out for yourself. I want you not to believe what I say. I want you to discover it for yourself. I challenge you to discover it for yourself. See how easily you can let go of your stuff. Can you give your things away? And see what happens. From your personal belongings, to your money, to your land, to your jewelry, to your kids, to your family, your loved ones, can you let them go and see what happens to you? Oh, you can say, oh yeah, I can let them go. Demonstrate that. Demis I don't care. You don't need to demonstrate it to me because I don't really care. Demonstrate it to yourself and see how dearly you're hanging on to them, especially money. Especially money. And see how, what kind of hang-ups you have in that area. And it's very easy to sit back and sit like this and say, Oh no, I don't have any att attachment to my money and my things. Okay, let's see if you can give them away. Give them away. You say you want God, you want freedom. I'm sorry, you can't take your money and your savings to fifth dimensional consciousness. You know why? Because it's your fear. Not the actual paper money or the land. It's your fear that you can't conquer. You can't conquer it because you don't trust. You don't trust if you give away your money, your things, that 
Her Majesty will take care of you. Because you haven't discovered Her Majesty inside you yet. If you do discover the presence, the spirit in your heart, then you know it takes care of you all the time. Then you can let go. So that's the price I'm telling you, you have to pay. Now somebody may come and say, oh my God, Zarathustra, you're so cruel. And you're, can you be easier on us? I'm just being honest with you. You may not want to hear it, but that's... That's the price you have to pay if you want to come and join me and sit next to me and share the kingdom, then you have to let go of everything you are holding on so dearly because those are the things that do not allow you your passage into a higher dimension it's just the way it is I'm sorry I didn't make it this way it's just the way it is I'm just telling you how you can get there what is it you need to do I didn't make the rules so don't get upset with me I'm just telling you how you can do it. Now, how can you do that? How can you let go of your attachments? How do you do that? Okay, Zarathustra, I'm willing to do it. Guide me. Can you teach me how to do that? Can you train me? I want to get there. I love you and I trust you. Which are the first two components of any spiritual students with their teacher it has to be love and trust otherwise but it is the teacher's responsibility to establish that not the student the teacher has to establish it the teacher has to show the power of love demonstrate that and transmit it to you so you discover it for yourself and the teacher has to show up and be dedicated and be consistent so the trust could be developed. Otherwise, it's all pretty words. And we heard pretty words so many times. So how do we do it? And to do that, you need to get centered. Centered, centeredness is the method, it's the technique, it's the path. Write this down if you need to, or come back and watch this video as many times as you have to, that you get centered. What's centered? is that you're taking your attention from the outer world. So that's another attachment you have to let go because you're so attached to the news, to your politicians, to your economic situation. You want to hear what's going on in the world. You have to detach yourself from it. You have to bring your, atta your attention inwards towards the Atman towards the Guru inside you towards the Buddha inside you towards the watcher towards the observe the witness is here and it's only watching so you have to turn your attention in that direction to the center of yourself 
and let go of the distractions that are happening outside that keeping your attention towards them. What's going to happen in the world? What's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to my family? What's ha going to happen to the environment? What happens to the animals? What happens to the land, the forest, the water? You have to take your attention away from them. There's plenty of people who are going to do the job. Don't worry about it. The apparent world takes care of itself. The apparent world takes care of itself. The apparent world takes care of itself. You don't need to worry about it. It was here before you were born and it will be here after you die. You don't need to worry about the welfare of this planet. It's not your job. It's far, far away from your job and your responsibility. Your job is to free yourself from the prison you're in. That's your job. After you're freed, once you reach awakening, once you're enlightened, then your presence by itself will help the planet. But right now you're not there. So buckle up your belt and turn your attention inwards. Get dedicated and practice Zen. Be Zen about it and bring your attention inwards to your own center and travel beyond your mind. Your mind is not your friend. Your mind is your enemy and it's a horrible slave master. So you have to ignore your mind, your thoughts, holy thoughts or unholy thoughts. All your fears, anxiety and worries are created in your mind. So you have to go beyond the mind by your dedication to be centered. You are still. Your attention is on one pointedness inside. Your attention comes to that one which is observing. You are observing your thoughts. You're holding your, your seat, your space of staying centered not reacting to things, not reacting to the world. First, you start with the world. Excuse me. You're, retri you're retrieving yourself back by being dispassionate to it. I know it's kind of counterintuitive, but that's the way. So you're bringing your attention to the watcher, to the observer, and you're taking the seat of the person, the viewer who went to a movie. You're watching a movie called Life, and you're seeing a character yourself in this movie, but you're not the movie, you're watching the movie. So no matter what happens to the movie, it's a script, it was predetermined, it was written, including watching your life, what's going on in the utter world. It's just a movie, it's not real. So your attention is inwards. Your attention is you're paying attention to the observer, not what's being observed. And as you're in this process 
of simply being the observer, something starts to shift, something starts to change, because you're touching the center of yourself. In the meantime, you're practicing daily non-attachment. You're practicing letting things go. What do you want these things for? Anyway, especially if you're getting older, especially if you feel the sense of urgency, what are you hanging on to these things? You can't take them with you. Let them go. Start to lighten up yourself. Less is more. It's less things to worry about. Less things you have to worry about taxes. Less things you have to maintain. Less things you have to deal with. Slowly, slowly, prepare yourself for illumination. Prepare yourself for your journey, your next journey. You can't just be caught unprepared that death comes and you're not ready because you didn't get ready. Because when death comes, it's your journey to the next level and you're not ready for the next level. So what happens? You're just going to have to repeat this thing again. Was it fun? Did you like it? You weren't heartbroken enough? You weren't betrayed enough? Didn't you get abandoned? Didn't you get raped? Didn't you get traumatized? Didn't you lose in love? How many times this has to happen to you to get it? How many times do you have to repeat the same thing? When are you going to get it? Get yourself ready for the next level by start dropping the stuff. Get rid of them and prepare yourself for your journey into the next level, a higher level, a different frequency by dropping your attachments. I know it's very scary because fear begin to rise. Worry starts to come and everything goes back to one thing, the I thought what will happen to me? What's going to happen to me? But you are taking care of the me as well. As you're lightening yourself and getting rid of things, you're bringing your attention inwards to the watcher. And as your attention comes to the watcher, the me starts to disappear too this me that is really worried, which is a thought, it's your mind. Your mind has created this false ident identification of who you think you are. Because if I ask you, who are you, you're going to give me a list. My name is Janet, and I'm a nurse, and I'm a mom, and I'm from Denmark, and I'm da-da-da-da you're going to give me these things, but that's not who you are. So as your attention goes inwards through one pointedness and you're looking at the witness, the one who's observing, the one who's in the movie, watching the movie, not what the movie is, the me starts to disappear inside you too. And as silence starts to take over, peace starts to take over, your fears begin to disappear because the fears are thoughts and emotions. Your anxiousness that you're missing out on the world starts to disappear. You begin to decondition yourself 
from thousands of years of conditioning, you begin to turn towards home. Home means peace. It's warm. It's nice. There's a nice fireplace there. There's warm food. It's quiet. It's safe. So your attention starts going inwards towards yourself, towards the watcher. Your mind starts to become more quiet. And this anxiousness, this anxiety that is created, especially now, especially with younger generations, that you cannot be present. You cannot be here. And you have to do multitasking, uh, tasking, multitasking all the time, doing 20 different things, because something inside you creates this anxiety that takes you outside of here, it begins to disappear. And try to surround yourself with the company of the wise. That's what Papaji always told me, seek the company of the wise. Find awakened beings who are centered in their own selves and hang out around them because they reflect back to you your own center and you come down in their company automatically it mellows your mind down the mind goes starts to slow down and the awareness begins to expand and then you're able to see your fears. And these fears are conditioned in you. Everything comes from the root chakra. Everything comes from the sense of being left out, the sense of being abandoned, the sense of loneliness. What will happen to me if I don't no longer have money? What will happen to me if people I love, they leave me? What will happen to me? It's me. There's this me, this thought of me, your identification with the wrong thing. That is so frightened. And that's just the thought that's in your mind. And it's not real, it's an illusion. And my job is to make sure, make sure you see this. To help you recognize who you are, to help you recognize your power, to help you recognize what has become of you who you really are and who you think you are. And hopefully I will succeed. Or at least I have tried. So we use being centered by turning the attention inwards and find the center, being still, being silent. We make that a daily practice. It's a necessity. It's absolutely a must. That's the attitude you must have. It's the food for your soul. Every day you have to feed the soul. As you feed your body. Means you incorporate the practice of being quiet. 
you incorporate the practice of non-reaction. You don't react to things. Even if somebody walks into the room and say, you're an asshole, you're a bad mommy, you're irresponsible, you just don't, you get in a practice of not reacting to anything. You make that your daily practice. You will fail and then you try again and you will fail and you try again. You practice not reacting and you disconnect yourself from the news of the world because they're not there to serve you. They only activate your mind. You are focused on one thing, to awaken from the dream you're in. And the world with its issues is a part of that dream. It's the maya. It's illusion. It's not real. And as you are in the practice and in the business of quieting your mind and being centered, and being still, you begin to, as you learn not to ignore the world and its news, you also practice to ignore the news of your own mind. You begin to ignore your mind and pick up an attitude of what is happening in your mind. What you're thinking is none of your business. Your thoughts should become irrelevant. None of your business, what you're thinking. Pick up that attitude and stick to it. Simply be ignorant to your thoughts. I have all kinds of thoughts. I had so many times on my foreign travels, waking up, Seven, eight o'clock in the morning, you wake up. It's almost mid-December. I'm in Sweden or Norway. It's dark. It doesn't light up till 9, 9.30 in the morning. I'm alone. I've been on the road for two months, going from one country to another country and another country. My back hurts. I'm not sleeping well. Bed's not comfortable. Pillow's not comfortable. You're just sleeping in different places. It's Airbnb. It's hotels. You, the sense of loneliness creeps in, you're tired, everyone's celebrating Christmas back here at home, your family is missing you, you're missing your family, you're missing your beloveds, and you're working, working, working all the time, day in and day out, you're working, and you wake up in the morning, and it's dark outside and it's 8 o'clock, it's 7 o'clock, it's 9 o'clock, it's still dark. And then around 9.30 the light comes but it's not sun, it's the light because it's gray. And then the sun goes down at 2.30 in the afternoon. I'm not used to that. So it's very depressing and then by 4 o'clock in the afternoon you're tired. I get super sleepy. But you can't sleep at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It's too early. And then the thoughts come. Oh, I feel so depressed. I hate this. I want to be home. I'm not loved. I don't have anyone in my life. Nobody cares for me. What am I doing here in a foreign land, foreigner? All these negative, dark thoughts come into your mind. It's like a dark cloud, like Darth Vader from Star Wars comes. It literally happens. I'm not making this up. And I wake up, this is the first thing I see. And I look at it, oh, that's the news this morning. I'm depressed. I'm not worthy. I'm lonely. So this is what I hear in my head. And I ignore it. I don't give it any attention. Because I know who I am. 
I know who I am. I know myself. I have discovered myself. I have mastered myself. So I don't pay any attention to these thoughts. You go take a shower, you shave, you make your juice, you get yourself ready. Then I go on my routine because I want to go get my cappuccino. And I'm walking in the streets of Stockholm and the snow coming down and it's beautiful and it's all white. And I'm walking to this coffee shop and then all of a sudden tears starts to come down. And I feel I'm so lucky. I'm so blessed. I'm here in Sweden or Norway or Denmark or Germany. And I'm so loved and people love me and I have my students and they give me so much attention and love and respect and care. So much. I get so much love from all of you. And how lucky I am that I can walk and my body works and my hands works and my arms works and my legs work. And I'm nice and warm and cozy and I walk into a coffee shop and they know me and, and I just like bliss comes. Gratitude comes. But if I gave in to those thoughts and I bought them, I would have been in deep shit. And then you get the news, all kinds of different news. This has happened, that has happened, such and such and family got cancer, such and such person's going to die, da, 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 da. or you get the worldly news. But I can't get bothered by any of it. I have a mission. If I can not walk my talk, then I'm worthless. If I lose my dedication to the cause, then I'm worthless. I'm of no value. So you ignore your thoughts, then sometimes strong emotions come. And once you learn to ignore that and stay centered within yourself and the fear and the anxiety comes, the anxiousness, this anxiety comes every once in a while that you need to do something. You got to do something. And it's worst on our children. It's worst on the younger generation. Because they don't know. Because they are with their phones and their instruments all the time. So it creates a lot of imbalance in their neurotransmitters from their gut. They got digestion issues. And the neurotransmitters are off. So there's this anxiety running through them all the time. Most of them. So many young people. People come to me with anxiety issues. But with the right training, right guidance, none of them have any power on the truth of who you are. Because awareness can never be touched by thoughts or emotions or your body. Awareness is beyond all of it. But we have to understand what awareness is. And you cannot understand what awareness is outside of words unless you become aware, unless you give it a try, unless you're willing Unless you're willing to sacrifice. Sacrifice your attachments. Your attachment to your mind. Your attachment to your story. Your life story. 
it has to go because it's of no value here. All it does, it amplifies fears. When you think about future, whatever you think of future is non-existing. Future is a projection of the past by the mind because future just simply does not exist. Neither has the past. None of them do exist. It's only now. It's this moment that only exists. Even if you're not present in this moment, you're still not present here, but you are here. Work on being present. Work on being centered. But let me tell you another thing. Centeredness is not even the end. We use being centered as the path, but it's not the goal. We learn to be still and be in your center. But that carries you as long as to the gates of awakening. After you're awakened, centeredness is gone because you will explode into everything. But to get to that point, you have to be centered. And that's one of the reasons I've designed active meditations to become centered. The more you're centered, the more energies build up inside you. You have directed the life force and universal force, universal energy into your own center. You are centered. You're aligned with yourself. Your attention has come into this direction. Means you are denying, you're ignoring the world as if it doesn't exist and it has no, it doesn't matter, it has no value. And you're also denying your mind and your thoughts, you're denying your emotions. And you are denying that you are this body. And you, all your attention comes to one place. The observer. You're only focused on the observer within yourself. And you're getting centered. And in this thing, in this trans, transition, transaction, the grid gets activated. And the energy starts to accumulate. The life force, prana, that you're breathing in, which I'm going to, in the self-awakening mastery, I'm going to teach you how you build this energy through your navel. I'm going to teach you how you do that so the energy gets stronger and more powerful and rising it to the point that it comes to the final leap, the explosion. But you have to gather this energy together because this gather, gathering of this energy through centeredness, to being focused, to being concentrated on one pointedness, will fill your fire because you do have the fire inside you. You want to become free. But you have to create a situation to fuel it so there's enough thrust underneath this rocket. You know, when this 
they're sending the rocket up to the sky, to the space, and in order for it to get away from the gravity for this spaceship, this rocket which is going up into the space, it has to pass the Earth gravity to get out of the Earth atmosphere. So it needs a lot of thrust underneath it, power to push it up for this rocket to carry all this weight, all these equipments and, and people to the space. And even then it needs to go further up to get away from the gravity of the earth so it doesn't get pulled back. So it needs a lot of thrust under it. And the same thing is here with your spiritual development. You have to build your energy through minding your own business. If your attention is on Donald Trump or Biden or the election or COVID-19 or what's going on in the world, there's always dramas in the world. Now there's this war in Azerbaijan and Armenia and blah, blah, blah. Or there's drama in your family or drama with your kids or drama with your partner or drama with your pets or there is or land or home or attorney or somebody died and you're fighting over getting your inheritance. There's always things that divert your, ed your energy and you're giving your energy away to things that don't give you anything back. Especially the news. They don't give you anything. They just suck your energy. And you're left out empty, tired, exhausted, and it creates panic and anxiety in you. And it weakens your immune system. It weakens you. This is what you've been doing all your life. That's why you can't become free because you're not minding your own business. You're not building the energy within yourself. I mean, if you get a chance, give me uh, the lightning notes of Zarathustra, my book, and I want to read a couple things to them. So, thank you. So you have to mind your own business. And in that, ignoring your thoughts and get in the habit of being an observant of your emotions too and an observer of the body. But you start to work on yourself and you build up the energy. You keep building up the energy. You keep doing your practice. But stick to one practice. Don't deviate. Oh, I'm gonna go and then and then and then like this and oh, I'm gonna go. You're just wasting your time. You're feeding the mind. You're not accomplishing anything. It's mental ejaculation. That's what you're doing. You have to stick to the practice that brings you peace. And that's not always pretty or entertaining. At times it may seem boring, but stick to your practice that brings you peace, calmness. It calms you down and it brings bliss. Soon, very quickly, bliss begins to come. That's the byproduct of being centered. That's the byproduct of being quiet, being silent. Bliss comes. And then you know you're on the right path. Because when you touch that, you want more. 
but you don't know you're the generator of it. But I'm telling you, you're the one who you're looking for. You're the only one who can do it. But you have to have the willing to do it and dedication. So you build up this energy and it keeps building up and building up. So this build up of this powerful energy is what begins to elevate you to a higher level of consciousness. It forces you to reach a higher level through being quiet, to being silent. I'm going to read something to you from Lightning Notes of Zarathustra, my first and only book. And then I'm going to answer some questions. Page 41. This is one of my favorites. For the, spiritual, for the spiritually advanced. This is for spiritually advanced. Silence. Silence is a way to knock on the door of Hall of Truth. Everything that is beautiful and true is born of silence. It is the foundation that prepares you for awakening. By talking too much, you may disturb and awaken what needs to stay asleep. By being silent, you will activate what needs to awaken. Stay still, stay silent, and be invisible. Stay in the background and mind your own business so you can slowly prepare yourself for illumination. This writing by itself has already given you the secret to awakening, the secret to freedom. If you just understand this, this by itself, you're done. You're finished. If you just understand this, what is he saying? What is this saying con conveying? Silence is a way to knock on the door of Hall of Truth. Means that no master ever has arrived into awakening by analytical thinking. It wasn't through the mind thinking, they became silent. Everything that's beautiful and true is born of silence. Everything comes from silence. You come from silence. Everything I say right now is coming from silence. Silence is the very background of everything. Because I can't talk all the time. If I talk all the time, you don't hear what I say. There has to stop. It has to stop. So silence is behind it. You don't think all the time. The reason you hear your thoughts is because the real you is silent. That's why you hear your thoughts. Otherwise, you could never hear your thoughts. Your thoughts are on the background of silence. Everything that is beautiful and true is born of silence. It is the foundation that prepares you for awakening. Silence is the foundation. By talking too much, 
You may disturb and awaken what needs to stay asleep. So by talking too much means by being active in your mind. Keep thinking, keep worrying, keep getting yourself engaged with nonsense of the world that is not of your business and it doesn't do anything for you. You awaken what needs to be asleep. You're awakening the beast inside yourself of worry, fear, and anxiety that does not need to be awakened. By being silent, you will activate what needs to, awa to awaken. When you practice being silent, you're activating the grit within yourself. Means you're centered and the energy begins to build within you. And the proof is in the pudding. Try it or talk to any of my students who've been with me for a while. And see, ask them. You can see them here. Ask them how their lives changed. Ask them how their lives were before they practiced silence. And what is their lives now after they practice silence. They're all happy. They're all in peace. They all have gone through transformation in their lives. I don't need to tell you that. You can ask them. Stay still. Stay silent. Be invisible. The more you're still, means you're centered and you're not reacting. You refuse to react and you practice being still and you're quiet, the more invisible. Invisible means that you're not involved with the world. You're not engaged with it. Stay in the background and mind your own business. So you can slowly prepare yourself for illumination. So if you want to awaken and reach higher levels of consciousness and enter into a fifth dimensional realm of wisdom and awareness, then you have to mind your own business means you come from the front line and you go in the background. You're no longer an activist, being an activist trying to save the planet, trying to save the forest or the animals. You're in the background, minding your own business, working on our own, your own awakening. And that's what it says here. I think I've given you plenty to contemplate on for today. No, Rosalie. I'm sorry, I have spoken to you many times and I've asked you not to ask questions. You're welcome to join the Academy. I welcome you with all my heart, but you need to stay quiet. Practice that. When the time comes, you may speak. Any questions, my dears, or comment? And I'm trying to unmute you, uh, Anita. 
you're going to have to unmute yourself. Can they, they can unmute themselves? Yes. Oh, okay. I can't unmute her. I don't know. Okay. Hello, okay, Miss. Hi, Anita. Yes, yes good morning. <laughs> Uh, so just uh, uh, what I uh, like to know is uh, you were told uh, to be silent and to be not in the front and to be in the back. How can I do my job? You know, because I'm all the time uh, full time in my job and I have to talk a lot and I have a lot of difficulties in the job. That means I have to solve and I have to be very active in my job. How can I right. do that? You know, this is a contradiction for me. How can I manage right. this? Right. Very good. Great question. Thank you for asking this. Okay. So what I'm referring to is <laughs> how do I speak? I'm in the front, but I speak from silence. I don't speak from my mind and I travel and I lecture and I meet many many people from all over the world but this is happening from silence so when I say be still and be silent it doesn't mean you don't go to work and you don't talk to people and you don't talk to your family or taking care of things you are practicing being still and silent within mm -hmm. means a part of that the requirement of it is to disengage yourself from the world so you're it this becomes disinterested in the affairs of the world so you're not involved in the news, you're not activate you're not being an activist in this period of time. I'm not saying you're going to do that all of your life. After awakening is a different story. But prior to that, your focus is only in awakening. But that doesn't mean you don't go to work. You don't react, you don't respond. Everything happens from inner silence. You're practicing on being quiet. You're practicing being centered. So even at work, if you have to react to something, there's a pause. Somebody says something you don't like, before you would snap back at them. Now, <laughs> now you pause. There's a pause. Yeah, there's a pause comes and then you respond whether you're going to back slap him or not but it's not happening automatically it's not robotic it comes from silence i bark at people every once in a while and i have to bark at them for whatever reason but it's never coming from reaction it always comes from silence Making sense? Does that, yeah? Can I can I ask something else? Uh, yeah. What you told before, when you are with your guru, and uh, you told we have to leave the people uh, back. That means uh, our children and our everything you love and everything we have uh, emotions. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I so I, um, what I'm thinking is. Uh, uh, you know, the uh, um, the precious thing in my life is are my children, you know, and uh, uh, they are in my heart and in my mind both, you know, all the time. So um, how can I manage this uh, if I want to go forward uh, to keep back that because this is very right. precious. Right, of course. <clears throat> it's another wonderful question you asked. Thank you. It doesn't mean that physically you abandon them and it doesn't mean that you're going to love them less and you're not caring and you're not available it means that you begin to drop your attachment that's the area you're working on mm -hmm. you're still there and you still give love 
and you're being a wonderful mom, but you're detached from the results. It's the results that you're detaching yourself from. Mm -hmm. I yeah. yeah, because you're working on becoming free. Keep in mind that when you reach awakening, you're far more better mother than you are today. You're more loving and more giving and more wise and you can be a great guide for them because you're not coming from an old conditioned way of an emotional attached place. That is, yeah, exactly, exactly, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Sir, You're welcome. Sure. <laughs> You're welcome. Anyone else? Hi, Amy. Yeah, okay. Hi. I have a question. Um, what about the people in your lives that are so attached to you? And even though you're working on yourself to detach from them, what can you advise about uh, dealing with people around you who are super attached? That's another good question. In the beginning, when your attention is going inwards, and you're starting to mind your own business, they, their reaction will change, most probably. Either it intensifies and they're more, more being all over you because you're pulling back. This whole transaction in human relationship is, is a energy transaction. So as you're pulling your energy away, they may invade you more. So you sort of want to be prepared for that and not give in to it and react to it. But when this transaction is also happening, you're, you're coming more inwards, you're minding your own business is also it gives you the strength to set your boundary because you're working on yourself and in this way of working you're becoming quiet centered and different parts of you starts to wake up through your old patterns of being a robot the robotic behavior that we had that because this is my mom, this is my dad, this is my brother, sister, lover, whatever, I have to act certain way with them. But as you're waking up to yourself, you're aware of the robotic reactions. And the robotic reaction starts to fall. So you're, you're getting stronger and more powerful in different aspects. One of the aspects is that you begin to develop this line of boundary. And B is you're not reacting to them unconsciously because awareness is coming in. So at first they can react very strongly in invading you because you're detaching, you're cutting the cord but slowly they begin to see the boundary and you're able to energetically hold them, hold them off. So it happens automatically. But you have to initiate it. And then if the initiation, initiating it is on your behalf by starting to take your attention inwards. Also, in the same time, I have to explain one other thing, which is this is in a different higher level of this con uh, conversation. I will get back. I'll get into this realm too. The utter world, the world you're seeing 
is a reflection of where you're at in your, con your consciousness. That's why I keep emphasizing to everybody to disengage from the world outside because it's an animation of what is going on in our mind. The more our mind gets quiet, the world outside you, your dimension, your interaction with that world, not your mom or your brother or someone else, your, your world starts to calm, become quiet. So the others are reflections of myself. So I'm honoring myself and I'm diving into my own silence and somehow the other starts to fade away. Make any sense? Did I answer your question? Okay, great. Okay, we're getting close to an hour and 50 minutes went by and it went by like this. This was the completion of our day five. Tomorrow is our day six. Um, Amir wants me to make my announcements because I keep forgetting about my announcements. For those of you who are new, those of you who've been hearing it, uh, thank you for being patient. Um, we do accept donations and we appreciate it. We're a small uh, organization and uh, we appreciate your help. If you feel like you're inspired to help, uh, go ahead and do so, and we're very grateful to it. If not, the love remains untouched. The I have two events coming. It's the Self-Awakening Mastery Workshop, and that's going to be in mid-November. Uh, November starts November 13th, correct? And this workshop, it's mostly active meditations. Of course, there's going to be teachings, but it's designed to build up your energy. It's designed to help you become centered and build up the energy as a result of centeredness. And I've talked about it earlier today. So uh, I'm think, think of keeping it limited to 30 people. So uh, we can connect with each other and I have time and and there is space for me to give you attention, one-on-one -on -one attention. So if you feel you like to be a part of it, go ahead and sign up um, so you reserve your seat. The Also in addition to that, for the first time in 2020, in March of 2020, I designed a one-on-one -on -one private coaching program. It's called Life Training Program and it's very potent. And in this tailor-made program, we meet, we have a consultation uh, appointment, we meet together and, and I find out where your blockages are and where the hang-ups are and what is going on and what's keeping you away, keeping you back from advancing to a higher level of consciousness. And I make a tailor-made specific program for your needs. And then we go from there. So if you feel compelled and you feel you're dedicated and you want to have me coaching you, um, then contact me and we'll make an appointment for you. I can't promise this program is going to go on. This is a just maybe a once in my lifetime or at least as far as I see 
I'm able to offer it till probably end of 2021 uh, until I'm able to go back on my foreign travels. So if you feel like it, contact me. My email address is info at zarathustra.tv. If you want to make any comments, contact us. If you have any questions, you can write to me. My other pages, including Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram, they're all Zarathustra 5D. Zarathustra 5D is the address of our pages. My email is info at zarathustra.tv and my website is zarathustra.tv. There's free contents on my website. There's meditations and other teachings that you can check out. Uh, we have over 700 educational videos on YouTube, my YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to it uh, so you get the notification as well as my podcast. Uh, we started it last year. It's been growing. Uh, we're at about 77 uh, podcasts. And as we go forward in the next couple of weeks, we're going to add up all these events to it. So there's many different ways that you can connect with me. And um, I'm happy we had this time together. And I look forward to our next meeting, which is tomorrow morning, as day six. Looking forward to seeing you, sending you lots of love and light, many blessings, and we will see each other tomorrow. Namaste.